Okay, hello all the crazy people out there. My name is Michael. I like wizards and dragons and making games, and let's talk about Toon Shaders. So I've made a handful of videos over the past month or so uh, regarding Toon Shaders, Cell Shaders, and how to implement them in Game Maker Studio 2. And I also last week made a video on um, detecting outlines in an image via shader, via something that is called a Sobel filter. And uh, today we're going to combine those, so uh, just as a refresher, I have a, uh, I have a couple images here of various rabbits, and I have um, the ability to apply said Sobel filter to them so that you can see the outlines of the image. It works better for images with, uh, with clear lines rather than a lot, of, a lot of detail like the actual photograph here. If you have not seen that video yet, I uh, recommend watching it, obviously. Links in the video description and in a little card popping out of the side of the screen. Today we're just going to be adding this to the 3D project. This video shouldn't take too long if you're already familiar with uh, how the Tune Shader works and how the Sobel filter works. Uh, you're also going to want to know about multiple render targets and, by extension, if you're running this on Windows HLSL. Anyway, uh, this over here is what the Sobel filter shader looks like. Uh, the vertex shader is just a ordinary pass-through vertex shader, and the fragment shader is where all the magic happens. I am going to um, just copy that into this project. So this uh, this Tune Shader project, by the way, I'll run this. Um, it's the same thing as it was at the end of the uh, the HLSL video, but I have added a couple more of these uh, of these objects, rocks, to the scene, um, just because I want more to have an outline around it than just Link himself. The models themselves came from a website called Open Game Art. I'll have links to all the relevant uh, locations in the video description if you want to see more. Uh, the first thing that I'm going to do is just create a shader. I'm going to call it SHD so Bell. Um, the vertex shader is just a pass-through vertex shader, as I said. Uh, the fragment shader is going to be what we wrote in that last video about the Sobel filters. Um, this is GLSL ES, this is not HLSL. Uh, I now have to specify which shader language I'm using, because there are potentially multiple shader languages that you might be using. Next, I'm going to go into the Tune Shader shader, into the, the, the Tune Shader shader, uh, into the Tune shader, and I'm going to um, actually put the, uh, put the world normals on the secondary render target. It looks like I was already doing that, uh, which is good because that just cuts down on a little bit of time in this video. Again, if you have not watched the, the video where I, uh, translated the tune shader from GLSL ES to HLSL, um, doing that would make your life much easier. Uh, I think just, just because calling the, um, the secondary render target SV underscore target one uh, just because calling this variable extra kind of bothers me, I'm just going to call it normals. So I'm going to rename that. Um, the member of the struct which um, the uh, the world normals are assigned to should be renamed to normals because that is the relevant information. And I think everything else is good. Uh, surface underscore extra is the surface that we're going to be actually drawing the normals to. Uh, we're going to be setting our surface set target extended ing. That's not a verb. Uh, surface underscore extra, we're going to be putting it in SV target one. And then in the draw GUI event, if you hold down the space bar, it'll draw the world normals instead of the um, the uh, the regular the regular application surface target. And um, just real quick, this is only like 10 lines of code in total, but the other uh, rocks are just being loaded out of a file. I'm generating 40 random rock positions uh, in the create event. And in the draw event, I don't know if I um, I don't know if you saw this earlier when I was scrolling through. Uh, we're just looping through the rock positions and drawing a rock at each position. This is not quite optimal because setting the world matrix kind of sucks, but optimization talk is something for another day. Um, okay, I think that should be it. So we're not uh, doing anything with the Sabale filter yet, but I do want to see when I hit the space bar, we now do indeed have the, um, the world normals being drawn. Link, as you can see, is colored uh, instead of with his, his actual texture with uh, a kind of warm magenta blue greenish. Uh, hue, as tends to be common for normal images, and uh, the rocks also have a similar coloration depending on which, um, where in the world each face is uh, is oriented. Okay, so let's apply the Sobel filter. So I'm going to uh, I'm going to comment out this whole thing with keyboard check and keyboard draw, keyboard draw surface, whatever, um, in the draw GUI event, and I am just going to draw the uh, the world normal surface. This is the sort of thing where you should you really should. Um, do one of those checks to see if the surface exists before drawing it, but um, I've, uh, I've beaten that point to death in previous videos too, and I want to get on with my day. Uh, let's shader 
set shader underscore so bell uh, draw the surface shader reset and this should draw outlines instead around the subel around the um, the world normals as long as everything went okay which it very much indeed did not okay uh, what do I need that is very much not something I want to look at for any longer than I have to I'm missing some uniforms here aren't I uh, what are the uniforms I need I need uh, uniforms. I need a uniform vec2 text size. Okay. Uh, shader set uniform. Um, no, get uniform. You can do it all in one line, but bar u. Text size is going to be shader get uniform. Was it a camel case or snake case? I've already forgotten. It was camel case. So no underscore capital S in size. And then shader set uniform f. Uh, U text size, and that is going to be surface get width. All right, the width and height of the surface that we're drawing, because we do need the uh, we need we do need the size of the texture that we're drawing, so we can uh, get each individual each individual textel, which we can apply the subel kernel to. And this actually looks really good. I have I did not test this before I sat down to do this video. Uh, I was actually not expecting it to look this good. This is really good. You can see a nice clear white outline around each of the rocks and also link against the black background. Okay, perfect. Okay, so we have the outlines. Next, we actually need to have the image of what we're going to draw on the screen. Um, if I were to simply, after this Sobel outline filter is drawn, uh, say draw surface to the application surface, this is just going to overwrite anything that was already drawn. And um, we're just going to have the, um, the image we started with, no outlines whatsoever, because this is all being drawn over the outlines. We are going to have to get a little bit more creative about how we combine these two images. So it would be kind of convenient in some ways, and maybe not in others, if you were able to um, sample from the same surface that you are uh, currently drawing to. And then you could write the shader that takes uh, both the, for example, surface underscore extra and whatever you're currently drawing to as its inputs and combines them some way. Um, that's not really going to work. Game Maker is not going to let you do that. The graphics API is not going to let you do that. That's kind of like trying to lift a box by standing on it. What you could also do is you could render this whole thing to another surface, to a third surface, and then combine the third surface with the application surface in a shader in some way. That, as you can imagine, would give you a fairly high degree of control over what you're drawing. But I don't think we need to go that overboard right now. Instead, we can use something called blend modes. Um, I talked about blend modes a long time ago on this channel, uh, before what I am going to call the modern era of, of game dev videos on this channel. I'd like to redo that video someday. It was fairly not very long and kind of surface level, and there was a lot more to blend modes than I made it out to be. Anyway, some of you may be familiar with blend modes already. Uh, they are used for influencing how each of the fragments that you draw, each of the fragments that come through the fragment shader, are combined with whatever's already on the screen already on the application surface if you're in the draw event, or already on uh, the frame buffer if you're in the draw GUI event or something. Yeah, the output of the shader is only part of the story for what ends up on the screen. Anyway, there's a couple of them. Uh, if you type GPU set blend mode, uh, you are, is it blend mode? With only, with um, as one word, it's one word. If you type GPU set blend mode and BM underscore and hit the spacebar, there's a couple options. Uh, the default one is normal. This one, it's tempting to say that BM underscore normal is just for uh, replacing whatever's in the draw target, the application surface, the frame buffer, whatever, with whatever fragment you just drew in the shader. But that's not quite it because it does still take alpha into account. If you're trying to draw something with a semi-transparent alpha, uh, it will be uh, linearly blended together. It will be uh, interpolated, the colors will be interpolated. This is what you're normally drawing with. Uh, there's also BM underscore add, this is a bit of a favorite for people who use blend modes and things like Photoshop or GIMP or other image editing tools. Um, this adds the two color values together, so it's, it's going to add the color of whatever's on the screen with whatever color you try to draw on the surface, and the result is going to be what actually is the final output. And this tends to give colors a brighter, sort of washed out look. It's often used for things like particles and, and that sort of thing. Uh, it's not very useful to us now. Uh, there is also the opposite of that, bm underscore subtract. This is going to subtract whatever color you just drew from whatever color is already on the screen. This is going to be of use to us, and you will see why in a moment. And there's also bm underscore max, which compares the two color values that you're trying to draw and goes with the uh, 
goes with the brighter one. I can't actually think of many common uses for bm underscore max. So, the way I'm going to do this is uh, by starting with the Sabel uh, filter on the screen. And I'm going to be creating uh, first a white outline around everything in the scene and then a black outline around everything in the scene. To create a white outline, I am going to be going directly against what I just said, and I can't think of any uh, major uses for BM underscore max. And I'm going to um, I'm going to set the blend mode to BM underscore max. Uh, when I draw the Sabel filter at the end, uh, reset it by saying GPU sets blend mode B underscore normal. Uh, this is like saying shader reset or or setting the world matrix to the identity or something along those lines. It just uh, it just cleans up when you're finished. And we're going to run the game. And this is going to cause uh, everything in the scene to be drawn with a white outline around it. So, uh, again, as I just said, and I probably should have thought for two seconds before I said I can't think of any uses for this, we are first going to draw the application surface. It has all of the color information and everything, and the textures and all that, and the lighting. And then we are going to draw with the Sobel filter, which is a black and white image. The white parts are the outline, the black parts are just whatever is not an outline. And if we draw the outline using bm underscore max, uh, whichever color is brighter is going to be what comes out on the final image. And since uh, white is definitively the brightest color that you can draw in a computer, uh, one, one, one on all of its color channels, uh, the outlines will be drawn, but the, uh, the black zero, zero, zero will be ignored and instead replaced with, um, it's going to be replaced with whatever color was there uh, already before you started drawing. So we now have a, uh, we now have a white outline around everything in the scene. Uh, this is okay. This accomplishes what I said we were going to do at the beginning of the video. Uh, I am also going to go w and draw a black outline because that is something you might also want to do. And you can also achieve it with uh, with some blend mode magic. So if you wanted to instead use a black outline uh, when you're drawing this, um, this outline, uh, you'd have to do a little bit more work. There's a couple things. If I were to comment out this and just draw the outline itself. Uh, remember, this is a, a white outline on a black background. Uh, if you wanted a black outline first, I'm sh and I'm sure there are other ways to do it, but this is the most simple way that comes to my mind. Uh, you'd want the opposite of this. You would want a um, a black outline on a white background on the uh, on the outline texture. So let's just real quick edit the uh, edit the Sobel filter so that it provides this. Um, this this here, this final color is going to be a, a number that is somewhere positive. I'm going to uh, first. I'm going to use the clam function to make sure that this stays within the range of zero and one, uh, because otherwise unusual things might happen. Uh, then I'm just going to uh, subtract one, subtract it from one. So 1.0 minus uh, the result of this calculation, the 1.0 minus the original number essentially. So if final started out as zero, uh, 1.0 minus zero is going to be one. Uh, if final started out as one, one minus one is zero. And anything in between is in between. So. Let me run this again, and you're going to see a white screen with black outlines on it instead of uh, what we had before, which was the other way around. Okay, that's cool. And it would it would be nice in some ways if there was a bm underscore min function or something along the lines of uh, of of bm underscore min. It might be possible to do that using um, the extended blend modes, but I don't know off the top of my head. Hey. Instead, um, we're going to create essentially the Photoshop multiply blend mode, or um, I imagine other image editing tools have uh, something similar, multiplicative blending. And those are going to multiply the two, the two values together, uh, what's already on the screen and what you are drawing with the surface. And unfortunately, uh, we don't have BM underscore multiply built into GameMaker uh, as one of the simple blending modes. So we're going to have to use uh, one of the extended ones. I kind of wish and I did think about doing this, about making a video about blend modes before making this one, but I do want to be uh, finished with the tune shader effects sooner rather than later. So I'm just going to say with a little explanation, um, if you want a multiply blending effect, you would say GPU set blend mode extended. If I'm looking at my notes on the other screen, uh, BM underscore dest, destination color, and BM, that's a GM, BM underscore uh, inverse source alpha. All right, I'm going to uh, I'm going to tell you to run this with no explanation, and it should work. Except it's not going to work because uh, because I apparently have um have commented out the application service, and uh, we are uh, we are multiplying everything with zero, so nothing's going to appear on the screen. 
here we go. All right, so we have uh, we have we have the scene. Uh, everything has a black outline around it. The white outline's actually easier to see um, for whatever that's worth. But now you see Link has a black outline around him when looking at the um, when looking at the floor and the rocks behind them. Uh, the rocks have a black outline around them when looking at the floor. Not so much with each other. Uh, the uh, the outlines are thinner when looking at each other, and that is, I think, because of how the Sobel filter is detecting the edges. Anyway, so here we have it. This is how you would apply uh, said Sobel filter outlines to the uh, the Toon shader. You can obviously do this with anything. You can obviously do this with any 3D shader or anything of the sort, but it, um, it tends to come up a lot in Toon shaders because, obviously, cartoons uh, have thick pen outlines around them, uh, generally. And if you're trying to emulate that effect with uh, with computer graphics, you probably do want something like that um, in your code as well. Uh, have fun with this, as always. Um, some notes, obviously, the uh, I'm doing this on Windows, so the Tune Shader has to be written in HLSL if you want multiple render targets. If you are doing this on something that is not Windows, so if you're making a game for a, a Linux machine of some sort, or a Macintosh computer, or something else, uh, you would be doing this with GLSL ES instead. Uh, in the multiple render targets video, I did comment on how you would do that. So um, again, go watch that if you haven't seen it already. Uh, I am done here. Although just because the white outlines look cooler, I think, uh, and they they stood out a little bit better against the um, against the the black sky, uh, the default screen color. I am going to go back to that. as I end the video. So, my name is Michael. I hope you found that interesting. I hope you cannot hear the, the clanking around that suddenly happened downstairs in the last two minutes, because that's kind of annoying. I have a Patreon, so if you want to contribute towards these videos being made, there will be links to that in all of the usual places. Otherwise, I try to post a couple of these game dev videos a week. Hopefully, I can start doing that reliably again, because the construction around where I'm living right now is almost finally finished, and I, I might have a little bit more time to actually have a microphone on. It helps that the Let's Plays are mostly all recorded like months and months ago, but I uh, I can't really do that with the game dev videos because they take more time to make. Anyway, uh, that's probably it for the Toon Shaders, unless I decide to come back to this and talk about how to do such a thing with something like deferred rendering. I'm not entirely sure if I'm going to do that yet. If you want the code for this, uh, as usual, GitHub link in the video description. I hope you all found that useful, and I will see you all later. Special thanks to David Key, Edward Holt, Emily Coyo, Jason, and Zenith for supporting these videos. If you want to get access to these things a day early, or to see your name in the credits, head on over to the Patreon page in the video description to join the fun.